Namaskar. This is the video about Dhyana, which is the seventh limb of Ashtanga Yoga. Ashtanga Yoga is the eightfold path. The eight most important practices that we must master to achieve complete development of body, mind and spirit. So today I'm going to talk about Dhyana. Dhyana if you translate from Sanskrit, it means meditation. Thi means intellect, so dhyana means attention. Attention. So practice of attention. When the attention becomes unbroken, when the mind is flowing, there is this comparison given about dhyana. Uh, dhyana is compared with like you're pouring the syrup or you're pouring the honey into the cup. So there is this flow of honey and it looks like this flow of honey is not moving anywhere. It's just, it appears stationary. But within that uh, bar of honey, within that stream of honey, there is movement. So similarly, when the mind enters into the state of dhyana, it seems like there is no movement because the mind is constantly engaged just with one object. There are not 5, 10, 20 or 30 objects. There is just one object and you are exclusively concentrated. If you achieve that kind of concentration, then mind is constantly moving towards uh, recognition, towards cognition of that object. And uh, something which was external to you, you internalize, you transform into the object of meditation. The, the very psychological basis of meditation is as you think, so you become. As you think, so you become. It means your mind acquires the shape of its object. If you think of the green, the mind becomes green. <laughs> If you, think, if you think of the crude, the mind becomes crude. If you think of the subtle, the mind becomes subtle. And if you think about infinite, the mind becomes infinite. So this is the basis of dhyana. Uh, previously I exp explained, like when people are sitting and meditating, they're doing... Most importantly, they're doing three steps of yoga. They're doing pratyahara which is the withdrawal of the senses from the external world. You need to forget the world, you need to forget your body, you need to forget your thoughts. That's called Pratyahara. Then Dharana. Dharana means to hold, to hold your attention, to keep your attention connected with just one object, to exclude all other objects and to just catch and hold with one object. That's called Dharana. And then on the basis of dharana, in the basis of, on the basis of concentration, your mind starts to flow towards assuming the vibration, the shape, the quality of the object uh, upon which you are meditating. So in spiritual meditation, the object of meditation or rather subject of meditation I will explain later this difference between subject and object, is Supreme Consciousness. You meditate on the Divine, you meditate on the Supreme Consciousness. You meditate on infinity, you try to grasp and capture with your mind the idea of infinity. So the mind has no choice but to expand, to be able to catch, to be able to grasp that idea of infinity. You also try to grasp the idea of subtlety, of consciousness. What is consciousness? Consciousness is awareness. It is something living, something alive, something uh, life itself. You are trying to understand, to grasp what is life, what is consciousness. I started to talk about the object-subject. I'm saying that uh, meditation is based on the principle as you think, so you become. 
So the object of your thinking transforms your mind. The mind transforms according to the object it assumes. So if you think of something crude, the mind will become crude. If you think of something subtle, the mind will become subtle. But when we talk about Supreme Consciousness, uh, it is not correct to say object. Because this infinity, this consciousness, cannot be object of our mind. Rather, our mind is the object of consciousness. So we accept consciousness not as our object, but as our subject. Subject means, like let's say, I look at, I look at my hand. So I am subject. The hand is the object. So there is subject, there is object, and there is a process of knowing. There is a process of perception. So, the Supreme Consciousness is the Supreme Subject, the Supreme Knower. And we are known by that Supreme Consciousness. So I cannot really accept, I can only accept idea of consciousness as my object, but not really the, that consciousness. That's why it says like, the finger which is pointing at the moon is not the moon. <laughs> so I can conceptualize the idea of consciousness, but not the consciousness itself. The only way to meditate on consciousness is to meditate on that as your subject. It means I'm being seen and consciousness is seeing. Like when I look at you, if I establish eye contact, I feel, yes, you are my object, but you're also my subject. Even when I look at the eyes of the dog, I feel also I become an object for the dog. Dog looks at me, I look at the dog. It means the dog is alive. When I look at the stone, I don't get the same feeling of connection. Because the stone doesn't look back at me. But the dog looks back at me. If I look at you, you look back at me. I feel there is consciousness in you. So in meditation, it is very important. When you sit in meditation, you feel that you are surrounded by living entity. Infinite, subtle, eternally blissful. Living entity. And you are, you are, by, you are, you are experiencing the connection with that cosmic awareness. So that is the meditation. So this is called dhyana. Your attention is constantly moving towards the supreme subject. You are moving towards the supreme subject. Um, also, it is said that dhyana, all other practices of yoga, you are making an effort. You are trying to concentrate your mind, you are trying to detach your mind from the external world. You're trying to focus and keep the mind in the state of the focus. But in dhyana, there is no effort. I compare it with the certain locations in the cosmos. There is a point between sun and earth. In that point, the gravitation of the sun and gravitation of the earth become the same. So when you fly, when you start your rocket, uh, leaving this, the Earth, and you are moving towards the, the Sun. You are spending lots of fuel. You are fighting with gravitation. And you are moving, burning the fuel. But at one point you will come, there will be the gravitation of the Sun will be higher than the gravitation of the, uh, of the, uh, than of the Earth. And then from that point you are not anymore trying to reach the Sun. Rather, you are falling on the sun. <laughs> so also in meditation. In the beginning, you meditate with effort. You see it, the mind wants to move with the material, limited objects, and mind is not tuned with infinity. So you focus, you focus, you concentrate, concentrate, concentrate. You move closer. Moving closer, the mind means you, as you focus and you desire, 
yeah, what to say? You you feel devotion, you feel love for your supreme desideratum, and with that love, with that urge, you're moving towards that. And then at that some point, there is no more effort. The the supreme goal is attracting you, because you become just like why we are attracted to something. If I like to think about my job, why? Because job gives pleasure. Job, job gives me some kind of happiness. That's why I'm bound to think about it. So in this way, by giving us happiness, the material objects or subtle material objects or psychic objects, they own us. They give us happiness and therefore we attach to those objects. So in, in, in meditation, when you overcome that attachment and when you develop the desire, the, the feeling for the supreme subject, supreme subjectivity, the supreme consciousness, and you start to get happiness and sweetness and joy from that supreme subjectivity, then you just want to move closer and closer, feel feel happiness from that divinity. And when meditation became like this automatic, when you don't want to break meditation, you want to keep going and keep enjoying, that is called dhyana. That's called dhyana. In dhyana, your mind is transforming and becoming, turning into light, turning into the cosmic happiness. This is what is happening. Uh, dhyana practice developing a particular layer of the mind, uh, which is called Hiran Maya Kosha, or it is also called Ananda Maya Kosha in some other traditions. So Hiran Maya Kosha, it means golden layer. It is the, the layer of pure divine light. Within us, there is <laughs> very interesting, you know, when you meditate, sometimes when you reach very deep concentration, your entire existence, your everything become illuminated with golden effulgence. Just like the, the, the sun is so beautiful, no? the sun is so resplendent. So, but it's difficult to look at the sun, you become kind of, the eyes is struggling to look at the sun. But there is an internal light. Within you there is light. So when you look into Atma or spirit, you will see that golden effulgence within yourself. So that's a beautiful thing. It's a kind of enlightenment, <laughs> sort of enlightenment. You feel that the, the light is not from outside, but it is from within your soul. So this uh, particular kosha, particular layer of the mind, it has an ability. Uh, its ability is intuition of love. Intuition of love, intuition of joy. Uh, once you've seen consciousness within yourself, then when you look around, you look all around, and you see the same consciousness everywhere. You recognize, once you have recognized God within yourself, when you look around, you see the same God exists everywhere, in every molecule, in every atom of this earth, in every atom of this universe. So that is the, uh, that capacity you achieve by the dint of dhyana. Dhyana means undivided attention, the flow, the pure, beautiful flow of your attention towards the divine goal. So how to do that? Uh, I already explained in a basic meditation, simple way. There are many ways how to do dhyana. There are visual ways through visual uh, bridge, like there is a special structure on which you meditate, which is uh, transmitting the divine vibration. You are trying to grasp the divine vibration. You are trying to grasp consciousness. That's one way, the visual. Another way is audial. Audial is through mantra. When you repeat mantra, you try to grasp the vibration of the mantra. So the vibration, physical vibration of the mantra is nothing. It's just, is a bridge. Real 
vibration real flow not physical it's not physical so by focusing the mantra you're trying to capture trying to grasp that infinite formless blissful rhythm which inundates which vibrates the entire cosmos so you repeat the mantra again and again and trying to catch what is behind that mantra you're trying to catch the idea of the mantra you're trying to catch the spirit of the mantra trying, trying to catch the essence of the mantra and you flow with that and you flow with that repeating again and again again and again again and again and then that divinity that cosmic consciousness becomes tangible becomes real within yourself and fills you with ecstasy so this is the process of dhyana there is one song it goes like this tomar namete tomar namete gaite gaite spondita hoye she bhavona aj dhyan dharonai dhyan dharonai divoshe nishai shore toko momo aradona this is song in the Bengali language written by my guru Shishyananda Murti. He wrote 5018 songs, which conveys many, many beautiful states of meditation. So in this song it says like this Tomar Namete. In your name. Name. What is name? Name of God. The God is beyond. Nobody can describe God. What is God? Is consciousness beyond your awareness, <laughs> beyond your mind. So you cannot know God. So nam or name, when you name the God, you form the bridge between God and you. So nam mantra, the nam meditation. Mantra means the name of God. It do doesn't have to be like really the name of God, but just the very concept is the sound with which you address the divine. Like I was teaching, you know, Baba, Nam, Kevalam. Baba means dearest and nearest entity. Nam, Kevalam. I only exclusively focused on capturing that divine vibration of the dearest and nearest entity. <laughs> this is the meaning of the mantra. So the, the spiritual seeker says, Tomar namete, Tomar namete, gaite gaite, spondita hoye she bhavona. In your name, singing and singing, singing and singing, Tomar namete, gaite gaite, spondita hoye she bhavona. That bhavana, that thought, that wave, that rhythm, Spondita, it has become vibrated, it has become alive. Ajdhyan dharanai. Today, in dhyana and in dharana. Dhyan dharanai, divo shai. That dhyana, that attention, which has been given to God, no? Dhyana and dharana and concentration. So in that attention, in that concentration, in my concentration, in my meditation, which has been going on for days and nights and days and nights, then now what happened? Aj, today, Dhyandharonai, Dhyandharonai Diboshin Nishai, days and nights. Shore toko momo aradhana. Aradhana means such love, which you cannot bear separation. If you've been separated from the object of your love, you cry and you, you just, you, you're so broken. So that kind of love, which is intolerable, which you cannot bear, that's called Aradhana. So, Shortoko Momo Aradhana. So my Aradhana today has become fulfilled. That love has reached its target. <laughs> So this is such a beautiful song and it uh, expresses dhyana. So dhyana is full of love, 
Diana is full of charm of the divinity. It's difficult to reach towards the Diana. You have to do a lot of effort to withdraw the mind from the physicalities, from mundanities. And then concentrate the mind very hard. But then, if you hold the mind sufficiently long at the object, actually, it's, if you achieve perfect dharana, it's just enough 20 seconds. <laughs> if you hold in a very perfect concentration, from that on, dhyana starts. If you really achieve the perfect concentration, then dhyana starts. Then you enjoy. <laughs> my friend, you know, uh, he's my teacher actually, and friend, and brother. <laughs> so we sit one time in India, in the place who was sanctified by our guru. So we are sitting there, meditating, <laughs> long time. Then after meditation, he said, Sadananji, you know, one should meditate long time. And then he will come and then he will vibrate you. <laughs> Nobody understands how good it is for you and how good it is for others. So really he touched me with that sentence. Really beautiful, you know. Once you, you become vibrated with the divine effulgence, it's good for you <laughs> and it's good for everybody who is around you. <laughs> So the way to be vibrated, to be blessed by divinity is to do dhyana, dhyana. And that is the seventh limb of yoga. As a result of that seventh limb, you enter into samadhi or the trance of absorption. The mind become absorbed by the cosmic. Like my guru says, he says, I am moving unto him, moving alone, this never-ending path. <laughs> this, I am, I am searching for his glory, his grandeur. I am moving alone, this never-ending path. When this outward expression of mysticism coincides with the inner core of mysticism, the goal is reached. The unit becomes cosmic. <laughs> I really like this. You know, like when the what is a mysticism? Mysticism is is the search of the great by the little. So I am moving on this path. And what is the inner core, core of mysticism? Inner core of mysticism is supreme consciousness. And we are moving around that supreme consciousness who is within us. So when the outer expression of mysticism, which is myself, which is microcosm, finite entity, when that finite entity reaches the infinite entity within, merges with the infinite entity within, the goal is reach, reached. Unit, the separate, the individual becomes cosmic. <laughs> This is the words of my guru, it's really, I'm trying to repeat the intonations. So the unit becomes cosmic. And to reach that goal, we have come on this earth. So nothing of ours is meaningless. Everything of ours <laughs> is meaningful. And we will be increasing that meaning meaningfulness from unit to infinite. This is also the words of my guru. So I love this very much. You know, the mysticism. Uh, when the mind is not focused, not concentrated, you don't understand this mysticism. You don't enjoy this mysticism. But the, when the mind, through your hard work, through your meditation, reaches to that stage when you can enjoy the cosmic vibration, then you are a happy person. <laughs> In my opinion, really, if we don't experience that, it means this life has been meaning, meaningless. So this life has to be meaningful. And we will be making this meaningfulness by increasing our knowledge, by our selfless action, by our sincerity, moving on that path. So 
I request you, please start doing meditation. Enjoy the divinity of the mantra when you sit and repeat again and again, again and again, again and again, trying to, in a subtle way, you're trying to catch the rhythm behind, not the sound, but behind the sound there is a cosmic vibration, cosmic rhythm. So again and again, you're trying to reach that cosmic vibration. You are, you are, you are moving towards that. Oh, then you, you can enjoy your life. So, yeah. So please try and then write me, Dada. I catch that cosmic vibration. I enjoyed it. I want to, to read it in your comments. Yes. So thank you very much. The last step is there about Samadhi of the Eightfold Path. Namaskar.